Hey everybody, and Tony here with my review of the Liederabend Il Mondo Felice with soprano Anna Zamwil, violinist Tatiana Zamwil, and pianist Matthias Zamwil, which was in honor of Maria Malibran's 215th birthday and was presented at the Staatsoper Unter den Linden. The compositions presented tonight were by Henry Purcell, Johann Sebastian Bach, Felix Mendelssohn Bartoldi, Richard Strauss, Charles Auguste de Berriot, Antonio Vivaldi, Giuseppe Verdi, Pauline Viardot Garcia, Maurice Ravel, and Pietro Mascagni. This marks the second Liederabend I caught Anna Zamwil in because this boasted a very ambitious concert repertoire considering that Maria Malibran was celebrating her 215th birthday. And for those of you not in the know, Maria Malibran was one of Gioacchino Rossini's many muses who sang in a good number of his operas and also sang in the operas composed by the likes of Vincenzo Bellini as well as Saverio Mercadante. But she mostly sang in a lot of Rossinian operas, including Angelina from La Cenerentola, Rossina from Il Barbieri di Siviglia, Semiramide, and even sang the role of Bellini's Norma. She was renowned for her extensive range from singing the deep, low, contralto chest tones to singing a lot of these high singing soprano roles. Therefore, she made a name for herself in having this versatile repertoire. And this particular concert presented that versatility tonight. Although Rossini was not in this particular program, there were still compositions ranging from Vivaldi all the way up to Mascagni to demonstrate the range that Maria Malibran had from contralto to soprano. In terms of my experience with Anna Zamwil, I have made it explicitly clear that I have always found her to be a natural lyric soprano. And during her prime, she was quite renowned for her silvery timbre and really good coloratura technique, especially with roles like the Swan Maiden, Gilda, Adina, Violetta, Mimi, and Musetta. Even with more dramatic coloratura soprano roles such as Donna Anna and Fiordeligi, she was still really listenable in those roles in her prime because of how she was able to navigate those florid passages and how she had those reliable top notes all helped by her silvery technique. When she transitioned to more lyric soprano roles such as Tatiana from Evgeny Onyegin and the Countess from Le Nozze di Fiero, she was still quite listenable in those roles. However, she did push her luck in singing more spinto slash dramatic soprano roles such as Ariadne from Ariadne auf Naxos, Elisabetta from Don Carlo, Elsa from Lohengrin, and her single performance this year as Turandot at the Staatsoper Unter den Linden. And even when she was singing those bigger, more demanding roles, her vibrato ended up being loosened and the registers tended to be a lot more compromised due to the fact that a natural lyric soprano is not intended to be pushed into singing these type of bigger roles. Therefore, Anna Zamwil tended to have not only a more loosened vibrato, but there were occasions in which some of her registers sounded uncoordinated, unsupported, and there were also occasions where she had an inverted vibrato, which kind of affected did her overall vocal performances as of late. Nevertheless, this Liederabend, let alone Anna Zamwil's second Liederabend that I managed to catch, managed to place her in a great light in terms of preserving her natural lyric soprano voice. It was best evidenced in the opener, Dido's Lament by Henry Purcell, When I Am Laid in Earth from 
Dido and Aeneas. She was able to imbue her voice with lyrical plaintiveness. And she was also able to take advantage of her natural lyric soprano roots to make this lament work even though there have been more well-coordinated singers who managed to master that particular aria, such as Victoria de los Ángeles and Kirsten Flagstad. Nevertheless, Anna Zamuil was in a class of her own, and she was able to use that natural lyric soprano voice to make that particular aria work. And she even surprised me with Erbalmedisch, from Johann Sebastian Bach's Johannes Passion. This particular aria is usually sung by either a contralto or a mezzo-soprano, but Anna Zamuil managed to throw herself in this aria with sufficient interest and abandon, and even though there were occasions where her legato singing tended to sound rather chopped in certain areas, she was still able to give a serviceable effort in managing to make this particular aria work. And it was also thanks to giving this aria enough emotional investment as well as interest to make it shine in her own way and do so with a relatively solid tone which she accomplished quite well. She was definitely in her A-game when she was singing Charles Auguste Berlioz's Il Sogno di Tartini which is the ballata for a soprano, a violin, and a piano. And in this particular aria, she was able to not only navigate the change of keys from D minor to D major and D minor to D major all the way up to consistently with D major to show the change in D minor's mysteriousness, intimidation, and sheer curiousness of what is about to occur in this otherwise perilous situation and with the D major keys more mischievous and more exciting frisson, she was definitely able to navigate that well, especially when she was aided by her signature top notes. And she let those top notes out with pure abandon. The fact that she was able to preserve her top notes well, whether they be an A or a B flat or a B, she managed to just launch at them with abandon, launch at them with sufficient clarion might, and do so with a lot of excitement in her voice. Sometimes the lower part of her voice tended to suffer. There were occasions where she sounded quite hollow. There were occasions where she didn't have sufficient chest tones. And of course, there were occasions where she did have a bit of a wobble in her voice due to taking on all of these taxing roles that ended up being a bit too much for her natural lyric soprano voice. Nevertheless, the fact that she was able to bring in some sufficient bel canto singing in Il Sogno di Tartini managed to make that piece stand out and it's kind of a shame that this piece isn't performed as often because it's a rarity and it's something that I would argue many sopranos would need to include in their concert repertoire because of not only those exciting key changes but also the demands that manage to be a challenge for any soprano with those beautiful and exciting bel canto lines as well as really finding the right nuance to make that particular ballad work. And let's also not forget about her rendition of Infelice composed by Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi, in which she was still able to use her blazing top notes as well as her her lyric soprano bel canto roots to make this particular aria work with everything that she's got from the recitative to the cavatina all the way up to the cabaletta. She was able to make all of these work and insert sufficient emotional investment through her shading as well as finding positions where she could sing with pianissimo or morendo or sing fortissimo that she was able to accomplish with both of these 
arias and she's shown brilliantly. Let's also not forget how she was able to have some support efficient vocal beauty in Antonio Vivaldi's Domine Deus and Giuseppe Verdi's Ave Maria Vagarizzata da Dante, in which she had that plaintiveness in her voice, that usage of pianissimo and shading, and sing these with the appropriate effect of prayer as well as meditation. Her efforts in singing Richard Strauss's Alla Seelen, Cecilia, and Morgan, as well as another rarity, which was Pauline Viardot Garcia's Hi Julie, were also beautifully done, as well as demonstrated that Anna Zamuel's natural lyric soprano voice can be still intact with the right repertoire and with the right amount of vocal beauty that she can still manage to dish out and use to her advantage, especially where Viardo Garcia's Ayuli is concerned. She had that natural lyricism to make that song as effective as possible. And of course, with Richard Strauss's Lida, especially especially where Cecilia is concerned, she still managed to use those brilliant top notes to her advantage and do so with aplomb and sufficient brilliance and charisma. And let's also not forget about Mendelssohn Bartoldi's Morgengruss and Auf Flügen des Gesanges. Yes, the chest voice should have been a lot fuller and a lot more nuanced, let alone more supported. Yes, she could have used a lot more vocal coordination between head voice and chest voice. However, I can still give Anna Zamwil credit where credit is due in terms of bringing sufficient charisma as well as sufficient charm in these particular songs. And in terms of her encore number, Mascagni's Intermezzo, she was also able to preserve that vocal beauty as well as that nuance and shading that she was able to accomplish, even though her voice these days does show some wear and tear and does also show some looseness in vibrato and loose looseness in certain regions of her voice, even when she is singing in middle voice. Even with those vocal problems that Anna Zemwil currently has, such as a much more loose vibrato, a more inverted vibrato, as well as occasions where she should have used a lot more coordinated chest tones, and also those occasions where she could have used a lot more support in her voice, she was still a thoroughly dedicated singer from beginning to end. She was able to continue to win me over with her dedication and her craft as a singer and how she was able to be consistent with her talent as a singer, let alone a veteran singer, cannot be paralleled. And she definitely did what she had to do to make this entire evening work. Equally as strong, if not stronger than our main star, Anna Zamwil, was the violinist, her sister, Tatiana Zamwil. And she played with effectiveness, precision, focus, and a whole lot of chutzpah in terms of not only how she was playing, but also her bowing, and also what she was able to do to find these nuances in her solo pieces or the pieces that she plays alongside Matthias Zamwil on the piano and Anna Zamwil singing up a storm. Tatiana Zamwil's shining moments were definitely in Felix Mendelssohn Bartoldi's Sonata for a Violin and Piano in F Major, in which she was able to make great use of the tempo and her bowing, and even accomplish this entire sonata with aplomb, interest, and heart, which she was able to give with everything that she's got and even to the nines. Her other solo number, which was Maurice Ravel's Cigane, managed to be exciting, fiery, precise, and just as accurate as her previous effort, if not much stronger as she had a lot more frisson, a lot more chutzpah, and a lot more technical and emotional investment that she was able to pull off exceedingly well. And she also butrist 
Anna Zamwil's vocal performances, especially when she was also assigned as the violinist. And I dare not forget about Matthias Zamwil. His piano playing was also just as precise, also just as strong, and he managed to continue being a bolstering presence to the entire concert, thus making him an absolutely reliable musician, as well as somebody who continued to strengthen each and every singer's performance, as well as his co-musician's performance, thus being extra reliable and extra strong and thoroughly consistent with everything that he's got as a skilled musician. So overall, I definitely enjoyed this concert in dedication to Maria Malibran's 215th birthday, with Anna Zamwil continuing to deliver such a dedicated vocal performance, even with some vocal flaws she had here and there, and Tatiana Zamwil being just as strong, if not stronger, of a musician as Anna Zamwil and Matthias Zamwil continuing to demonstrate reliability and equal amounts of fortitude to the entire performance, this particular concert was a treat to listen to, and I definitely salute Anna Zamwil's total dedication to her craft, Tatiana Zamwil's sheer precision and sheer strength as a violinist, and Matthias Zamwil's absolute reliability, and here's also hoping that they continue to not only grow consistent with their techniques, but also grow stronger as artists and musicians. And for those of you who caught Anna Zamwil's Lira Abed, Il Mondo Felice, what did you think of it? Did you thoroughly enjoy Anna Zamwil in everything that she managed to present? What was your favorite song that was performed? Did you also feel like there were some things that you enjoyed about her, whether it be her blazing top notes or her total dedication to her craft? Did you also feel like there were some issues with her voice that she could have solved that easily? Did you also enjoy Tatiana Zamwil and her craft as a violinist? And did you also feel that Matthias Zamwil was just as reliable as a performer, let alone as a musician? Or did you feel like the entire concert was not really to your liking? Please comment below and let me know. Well, that's it for my review of Anna Zamwil's Lida Abend, Il Mondo Felice, dedicated to Maria Malibran's 215th birthday. Tune in next time for my review of, this time, Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, starring Diana Schnürpel as the Queen of the Night at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. So until then, Good night, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving week.